welcome. Really happy to bring this update for the M5 stack sets. It's now called LMPOS. Um, and it comes, as you saw in that little video, it comes with its own captive portal, so it makes it really easy to add in credentials. You could flash one of these things, give it to a friend, and then they could just follow the instructions. You know, you trigger the portal, you access its Wi-Fi, which it's broadcasting. It triggers one of those captive um, uh, pages where you can input your Wi-Fi credentials and put in your LMBits API key uh, for your LMBits wallet. Manual LMBits um, endpoint if you're not using LMBits.com, if you're using your own instance. It's just a really easy way to set up a point of sale. Uh, as you can see in that video, you could go into a cafe, you could you know, get it out and you could connect it to their Wi-Fi and start using it almost immediately. So it uses the M5 stacked um, faces kit, which is a really nice packaged ESP32 microcontroller with screen, a couple of buttons, and then it's got a nice keypad, which we can use for our point of sale. Also comes with a great little charging dock, which is magnetic, so ideal for a cafe and bar where you're just sort of picking it up and you just need to use it quickly. One of these was running in room 77 in Berlin for about a year. Had a load of traffic and worked really well the whole time, so it's been stress tested. Um, yeah, if because uh, I'm in the UK, you can use Pimeroni, which is a, a good company, and they're like 60 quid for one of these M5 stacks at uh, one of these M5 uh, faces kits. You can get them as well from um, AliExpress and also the, I think the M5 stack actually have like an official shop you can buy them from as well. You'll need to download and run uh, the Arduino IDE. Arduino have uh, a new IDE um, 2, but well, it's in beta, but I've been using that and I haven't had any problems with it and I actually found it a bit easier to use and more reliable than uh, 1.8, so I highly recommend that. Um, I'm running it on Linux, you don't need to install it, you just download it and then, you know, uh, run the little uh, executable and it just boots up. You'll need a LMBits account. LMBits.com is really just a playground to play around with this stuff. If you're using it in, you know, in the real world, then you should be running your own LMBits instance on your own node or backed by your own funding source on your own VPS. I've got tutorials for that as well uh, if you have a look at this channel. Um, and that's it really. So yeah, you just download the project. Uh, you'll need to install a couple of libraries. You've got Wi-Fi Manager, M5 stack and Arduino JSON you need to install. If I get the, where are we? If I get the uh, Arduino up, I can show you how to do that. Um, you can, you know, you click on this little button here and then for the boards, you, you know, uh, type in ESP32 and then this is the thing which you need to install. So just click on install down the bottom and then for the libraries, yeah, type in M5 stack. This is the one you want to install, the M5 stack library. And the same for Wi-Fi manager. Wi-Fi manager is a little bit fiddly to find, so. I'll, I'll get it up so you can see it's the, which, which is the right one. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, see, there's a whole bunch of libraries called Wi Fi Manager. And the one I'm using, because I could do these custom variables, is this one. Okay, so uh, yeah, download that Wi Fi Manager library. And then Arduino JSON, that's just a very regular popular library um, and you don't need to download Wi-Fi Client Secure that's packaged in with the ESP32 boards when you install those. You may need to add, um, uh, there's instructions here as well, where are we? Oh there, there's, a, there's a, 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 a shopping item there, but there's instructions here on how to install the ESP32 boards into your Arduino IDE. Um, let's see official instructions from Espressif, the people who manufacture the ESP32. So, yeah, follow that. Um, and then get the code, flash it, and you're good to go. And that's it, really. You know, you just trigger the access point by pressing the A button, input your credentials, uh, input your Bits URL and your invoice key, and just magically works. Um, so if you're not interested in looking through the code, you can just finish this tutorial now, and that's it. Uh, you can uh, yeah you can just run it and use it and start using it if you want. I'm now going to go through the code a little bit so we can see what's going on, um, just for those who are interested. So if you want to stay and listen to that, great. If you don't, then feel free to turn the video off now. And thanks for watching. Cheers. For the rest of you, let's have a little look at the code, shall we? So first thing we do is we load a bunch of libraries. Wi-Fi is included in the SP32 boards. Wi-Fi Client Secure is included in that too. So Spiffs and so is FS. So the only ones which we've had to install are M5 Stack, Wi-Fi Manager, Arduino JSON, um, and in fact, yeah, that's that's it. That's what we've had to install. Um, there's this. These couple of we define, define a couple of things for the uh, for the keypad. 
And then what have we got? We've got a bunch of variables. So um, it's the, the, the variable for the server is alanbits.com. Uh, but when you throw up the active captive portal, you you then have the ability to change that by importing something. Um, in the currency, I've set it to GBP. If you want it as USD, when you set when the captive portal comes up, you can you know instead of GBP, you can type in USD in capitals or E U R if you want euros, whatever. Um, you can change the password for the uh, LMPOS Wi-Fi and time pin I'm not sure what that is can't remember what that is oh high pin oh cool yeah so I actually do I use that I think I might use that um do I set that to low or high oh no maybe I don't use that I think maybe that was the intention to because you have these GPIOs on the side here of like being able to plug in an LND or something to to pin 16 and then have pins that LED light up when you get a transaction uh, but I'm not sure I implemented it I could implement it though it wouldn't be hard to implement yeah, yeah, a bunch of other variables, blah, blah, blah. And then all um, Arduino projects have a setup and a loop um, function. So the setup function just you know sets up the hardware pretty much. So we, we start our M5 library and um, we do our we run our logo screen function and then we run our portal function, okay? So let's have a little look. Where's the logo screen? Okay, so we have, and for the M5 stack here, we have a bunch of screen functions like the input screen, the processing screen which says processing, um, the keypad where it goes and gets like the key when you press the key, the uh, initializing screen, which I'm not even sure I'm using to be honest, portal screen, so when the portal launches it tells you it's launched completed screen, so all the screen stuff sort of here, there is screen, or the QR display screen, it's a nice and small function, so that's where it displays the QR code, so all these little functions I just, just call with that within my code, and then we're down into like the um, uh, you know the the functions for actually so first you know we're using the open node API for getting the prices Bitcoin prices um, I think it's a great API endpoint for Bitcoin prices uh, they have all you know a whole bunch of currencies on there and it's very very stable so we're using that um, and then to get the invoice obviously we're connecting to our Allen bits so we're taking the Allen bit server variable which was allenbits.com but if you've actually changed it in the portal, it'll be whatever you you know, whatever you changed it to. Um, and then it's building our post request, where it's posting some data to alanbits.com and saying, um, or your alanbits instance, saying, can I have an invoice for you know X amount, uh, the number of sats? So where does that happen? I'm going to be zipping up and down, I think, through this file. That happens uh, in the main loop. So yeah, there we are, there's the rates, we went and got the rates, didn't we? Then it shows the input screen screen, then it starts looping around this while loop, while this um, uh, CNTR, I don't know what I call it, that is, is one. It loops around here, um, uh, allowing someone to input some and input something into, with the keypad. And then if button uh, A is pressed, what's it do? Oh yeah, if button A is pressed, I think it just refreshes, just starts again. If button B is pressed, then it goes and gets the invoice. Um, so we get a processing screen, then it runs the get invoice function, which is the one we saw down there, that post request, which we just looked at. Um, gets back the invoice, displays it on the screen, that's the QR uh, display screen thing. Then it goes in a loop, and every three seconds just checks to see if the invoice has been paid. Once the invoice has been paid, it breaks that loop. Um, and uh, shows a complete screen, there's a little delay, then it loops around again. If you, pr oh yeah, that's button A, that's the one which, which cancels it and starts again. Um, and there's a, oh, so you can press, oh, here we are, I can see that we can press C or B to get the invoice um, screen come up. We just use button B, I suppose. Um, don't know why I've got two of those there, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And then what else have we got? That's it really, that's the that's the main program which is running. Oh, let's have a little look at the portal function, shall we? Uh, yeah, that's the get invoice, that's the check invoice, which is very much like the get invoice thing. It does a, a post request, a get request even, and then gets it back, you know, returns true or false basically. And if true, then it breaks that thing. Um, portal, here we go, here's the portal function. So, it runs a little loop gives someone, oh here we are, this is where it runs a little loop, so it gives someone the opportunity to press A to trigger the portal, and then once the portal's triggered, um, 
it uh, yeah it creates that hot spot this is it this is um, adding a couple of parameters these are parameters which you can change obviously like this, this server which we're attaching to and the description which we're going to put in the memo the invoice key the currency the password for the uh, you know the devices Wi-Fi so not only Tom Dick and Harry can press it and you know put in their own credentials we want that um, and then yeah it just this is sort of kind of complicated but it, it just this is the uh, the actual portal which is being triggered it's using that Wi-Fi manager library so a lot of this stuff won't make much sense it just gives us access to the actual variables which we can change for the library itself um, and uh, yeah that's it um, so you know you can verify that code you can verify there's only three plugins so you can verify those plugins if you want to uh, but ultimately if someone is you know black hatting us then uh, they can only have our invoice key anyway and as Alan Bits is so easy to set up multiple wallets then you know you can just have a wallet for your coffees and all anyone will be able to do is just see how much is in that wallet and then generate invoices so yeah it's pretty pretty secure solution um, nice and easy to set up and you know easy to kind of flash send to a friend so here you go use this in your bar or your cafe and then they can very easily like you know add their own credentials using the portal thing uh, so that's it for the more complex explanation of how it works and um, yeah that's it uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you again, have fun hacking and I hope you enjoy your shilling this to your brick and mortar business owning friends. Cheers.